What is going on, everybody? Welcome to today's video. In this video, we're going to be covering some strategies for growing our eBay business. And I have a special guest here today dealing with Dalton, a YouTuber and a reseller that specifically just specializes in shoes. And I just wanted to pick his brain on some plans and ideas that he has for scaling and growing our eBay businesses during this busy time of year. So without further ado, we're just going to get right into it. Not waste any time. What is going, going on? on? Yeah. So just wanted to cover like, um, you know, what your background is as far as like, before you got into reselling, because I believe there is a lot of power in our testimony in our story. People think they need to like have a ton of money to get going, starting a business uh, with reselling. And, and, you know, I don't have this, I don't have that. I, I, I believe that, you know, we're just all kind of like, you know, we're all alike in that similar way, like to get, when we get started reselling. So I just want to know, like, what was it like, what were you doing before reselling and what got you into the idea of like, hey, maybe I can make this into a business? Cool. Yeah. So I, I mean, just Cliff Notes version. I've got, my background is the restaurant industry. My parents uh, ran a restaurant in Kansas, actually. Shortly after high school, I moved to Orlando, Florida and made my way back into the restaurant industry as like a server, bartender, worked basically all of the positions inside of a restaurant. But mm -hmm. I hated it. Like I hate having yeah. someone else like write my schedule. Like I'm sure a lot of people that are resellers can re relate to my story. Like I said, it's, it's pretty basic. Just hated my, hated someone else writing my schedule and then eventually stumbled into like the YouTube category of reselling and noticed that yeah. people were making a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. Initially it was just garage sales. I just go to the garage sales on the weekends, find just random stuff that I can flip onto eBay and eventually yeah. built that up and ended up getting fired from my job because, you know, people like us just aren't good employees. <laughs> and at the time, I, uh, I decided to just go full time because I was making like a, what I thought was a couple thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. and quickly learned that I just it wasn't working. Like I ran out of money after like 60 days and um, transitioned into instead of like just giving up and getting another full time job, transitioned into a part time job. Uh, same thing, serving, bartending. Nice. And instead of working the 40 hours a week, I was only working 20. And I really just wanted to focus mm -hmm. in on like what I did wrong and how I can improve mm -hmm. on it. So mm -hmm. the next time I try to go full time, it's going to work out. And mm -hmm. through that course right. of time, I like several areas of my business, there were, there were holes in it. And mm -hmm. the, the solution that I found was just sticking to one category. And that for me was shoes. And that just... Mm -hmm sped up everything like sourcing photographing inventorying listing like everything just it just made sense my budget made mm -hmm. sense like i knew exactly how many pairs of shoes that i needed to sell every single day because i knew mm -hmm. like on average what my profit was per pair and mm -hmm. then after probably 60 to 90 days of working that part-time job jump back into the full-time and then three-ish later three-ish nice. years later we're here nice so yeah about about three years and now you're full-time Cool. Yes. Yeah. I've been full-time for about three years. Yeah. Right on. Um, yeah. So kind of like, what would be your advice for like newer resellers that, you know, that, that could are kind of like in the same position, like, would you suggest hanging on to a, like, if they have a job, would you suggest slowly scaling into like a reselling business or maybe saving up a ton of money and then going all in? Like from your experience, what would you feel like would be a good idea? Definitely a mix of both of those, like the saving up a bunch of money. I didn't necessarily do that at the beginning, but having, mm -hmm. you know, three to six months of expenses lined up would, it's just like, padding like you're you're, you're safe mm -hmm. for a while you can experience mm -hmm. experiment for a while but yeah. i also do think that the part-time jobs underrated like a lot of resellers or people mm -hmm. that are in a job that want to be a full-time reseller they look at it as like really black and white when it's not a black and white yeah. situation like yeah. you Things can step happen. back from from your full-time job especially if you're in a big city like you can work 15 hours a week as a server or a bartender mm -hmm. and dang near make a full-time income in 15 hours mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because of like the way yeah. tipping is, um, mm -hmm. and good and then restaurant. You'll have, mm -hmm. Exactly. So that way, yeah. instead of working the forty to fifty hours a week, you're working fifteen mm -hmm. hours a week, and then mm -hmm. just really figuring out all the kinks in your reselling business. I think mm -hmm. that's the that is by far the best way to transition from a full time into a yeah. reselling business, in my yeah. personal. Opinion. 
Yeah, I agree. It's, you know, kind of similar. I come from the restaurant background 15 years and I just knew like we're born for more. Like, right. Ideally, I wanted a business. I just didn't know what kind yet. And by like the way you get mistreated in that customer service culture, it kind of, you know, like pushes you to be like, start reading books, start improving <laughs> yourself, you know, yeah. start refining your craft. Cause I believe we all have like special gifts. They just need to be like refined and, and, um, and discovered. You know, yeah. And serve yeah. to the world, you know? Um, so that's really cool because, you know, there's a lot of people that come up to me like at my local church or in the community and they like go like, what do you do? Cause I live in the mountains and they're like, mm -hmm. and it's a great like way to introduce them like, Oh, reselling. And they're like, like, oh, what's that? And like on eBay, when most people hear about that, they're like, oh, you know, you make a couple hundred dollars because right. they don't realize that eBay, you can, if you have that business mindset and the system in place, you can form it into a business where you can work from home. So um, gives people hope. Um, it's like, what would be like your now next step into like, like into the quarter four, what do you do to like prepare and plan for like this holiday season? Are, are you going to be increasing your listing goal or are you going to be like adding new things into your store? What, what would be your I ideal strategy for what's coming up? So my, my answer to this is probably super boring, but it's just a lot of the same every single day. Um, like when I first got into reselling, there would be, I'd literally go days without listing. And like, if you're a reseller, that's the only way you're making yeah. money is if you're listing. And when I started to see success is whenever I was listing every single day and listing about mm -hmm. roughly the same amount, maybe gradually increasing that amount every single day. But mm -hmm. like with Q4, the reason it's it's so uh, such a big thing for uh, small business owners, business owners, is there's a lot more people shopping and there's a lot more impressions on your listings. Yeah. And so really what I do we're, really what I'm doing every single day of the year is just trying to improve my um, conversion rate, right? Like how do I yep. increase the quality of my listings? How am mm -hmm. I, how can I improve my keywords? How can I properly mm -hmm. list these items and list the same amount of items? How can eBay favor my store over someone else's store? Like just mm -hmm. really dive into how to have the perfect eBay store and just do the same, mm -hmm. do that every single yeah. day. Like, mm -hmm. sure. If you're to that point and you're cruising, you're, you have the, um, the, the, the systems in place the system, to do every yeah. single day. Um, mm -hmm. Sure, scale up a little bit. If there's a lot of buyers, put more products in front of their eyes. But if mm -hmm. you're not to that point, just focus in on creating that habit of getting mm -hmm. your work done every single day. And yeah. if if you're hitting that conversion, like if your conversion rate stays the same and you're getting a lot more impressions because it's Q4 mm -hmm. and a lot of more mm -hmm. people are shopping, of course your sales yeah. are going to go up. So yeah. that's the only thing that I'd, I'd be doing, but that's what mm -hmm. I'm doing all year round like mm -hmm. actual advice for Q4, like, like I said, sales are going up, just be stocked up on supplies. Like you're going to be selling more, make sure you get your boxes ordered from USPS, make sure you got tape, make sure you got all these things in place um, for the big sales yeah. because they are coming. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good lesson right there. You know, nothing worse than having all these orders and then you have nothing to ship them in. Exactly. And you know, not only that is like, USPS is, can be very slow when you order those during quarter four. So yep. even, you know, I'm starting to like, I have all the whole back porch is full of uh, padded flat rate envelopes <laughs> and uh, next day shipping envelopes. And, and I actually still have some from last year because I mm -hmm. just ordered too many. Um, I kind of <laughs> went with what tech said and he's like stock up. And I just went all in on USPS. <laughs> you can order free supplies and, and that's, you know, mind blowing to most people that aren't into reselling and they right. start getting into it and they're like, Oh, I need to order all these supplies. Well, most of them, 90% of your supplies you can get for free on USPS. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that is some, that is a good detail right there. Um, and then, so like long-term now, like long-term vision, long-term, uh, um, you know, what do you want to do as far as like scaling? Cause I know you, you're big into social media, you have your own private label product, but more specifically in your reselling business, where do you see it one year, five year, 10 year from now? Um, like what would, what does it look like to you? Okay. So scaling up my reselling business, I'm still trying to find that like, uh, 
mainly just improving what I'm doing every single day, right? So I'm trying to find like how many listings that I should be selling every single day. Like what's the sweet spot? Right now I'm listing 20 a day. Um, I don't see myself getting up and being somebody that's selling or that's listing like 50 to 100 things every single day. That's just not where my passion lies. Um, but like right now at 20, that seems like a good sweet spot. Maybe I'll bump it up to 25. And after that's cruising for a while, um, get back to where I was at 15 listings a day. When I was doing 15 listings a day, like it, it took no time at all. It just became a routine mm -hmm. when like 20 to 25 starts to feel like that. And I have the rest of the day to, um, these other passions of mine, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. like I, I really enjoy social media learning, like mm -hmm. what performs well, like how do how do I make this yeah. short video? Like, what do I say in the first second of this short video yeah. to make it blow up? You know what I mean? Like these yeah. little things, um, yeah. how to improve my YouTube channel and, mm -hmm um, my private label, like that's like, mm -hmm. I'm just testing all these little things and that's mm -hmm. more where my passion lies. Um, I yeah. love reselling, but like my yeah. goal scaling to me is getting it done early and then mm -hmm. learning more about those things that I'm passionate about getting better. Like, I don't yeah. know if it looks like me being a content creator or me, uh, running content for somebody else. Yeah. Uh, but like, I, I love that. Like we talked before mm -hmm. the show, you were talking about think media. Like that's one of my favorite YouTube channels. Like that's the kind of mm -hmm. content I consume. Um, so yeah. scaling my reselling business looks like simplifying it, but yeah. making more money at the same time so I can spend mm -hmm. it, spend time in other areas. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny you say that because with eBay, um, you know, I've yet to find something, you know, legally that you can multiply money this fast, mm -hmm. you know, and you get to a certain point in your business. And I believe I'm there now to where I'm like, I don't think I want to put, do more listings a day. I think I'm really yeah. happy where I'm at. Um, and to build other businesses, build yeah. other businesses that solve problems, that help people, that give back. Because mm -hmm. I, I, working in the restaurant industry for a while, I want to help those people and, and help them realize, hey, you know, there is a great opportunity right now, especially with reselling. Um, you know, whatever you want to do, video games, toys, shoes, um, just such a good opportunity right now with it growing and continuing to grow to maybe start thinking about, hey, in my and I work my nine to five, but my five to nine is where it really counts. Like that time right. after work, maybe I could put up five listings a day or two listings a day. And slowly, years later, you're going to have a business that's going to overtake your your job, you know, exactly. Um yeah, so I've yet to find something where you can buy something for a dollar and sometimes sell it the same day or the next week for 20 bucks. You uh -huh. know, like we're talking 2000% return on investment. And you're like, what? You're like the stock market is really funny. Like, yeah, you can you can make good money, but it's so much risk. And there's no risk in a pair of Gap jeans. You know, there's no risk in a in a, a, a Merrill pair of shoes. You know, like, like unless you're buying dry rot shoes or whatever but of course like but at the same I time it's still only yeah. a buck you know what i mean yes yes yeah. so it's so cool because um it's it's once you find the system and mm -hmm. everyone has their own different system but once you find one that works for you you said it too it's like just getting good at that you don't yeah. need to be doing the 200 listings a day because oh i need to like make millions right now it's definitely a slow growth like yeah year yeah after like year. You, you said it perfect like if you're if you're yeah. listing 10 things right now you shouldn't be focusing on listing 100 you should be focusing on how can i be the best person in the world at listing 10 items mm -hmm. every single day yeah so um in your main source um you know it if if you don't know who dalton is go check out his instagram i will link it in the description below but you, you source mainly from thrift stores locally is that right or do you do yeah. any bulk buys or yeah. So, I mean, a little bit of all of the above thrift stores, uh, flea markets, definitely the main source of my income. Um, as you can imagine, like putting out content on social media, people yeah. realize what you do and like the bulk buys do come my way. Um, mm -hmm. so I do have several bulk buys coming in all the time, but majority is coming from, uh, thrift stores and flea markets. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, and then like, I guess just going back to like how you started, but like, what was the thing that sparked your interest? Like you were waiting tables and like, how did you come across reselling? Like, was it from a YouTube video or like, what was the thing like popped in your head? Like I, I should try this. 
Yeah. So actually it was a coworker. Like I was, I, I started this new job at a hotel, a restaurant inside the hotel and uh, made friends with one of the guys. And I just, he just said off cuff, like one day that he was going to Ross to flip shoes after work. I had yeah. no idea what he was talking about. I'm like, yeah. you can't go to Ross and buy, and flip shoes. It just doesn't make sense. But then, yeah. then we went and then I just kind of dove into it a little bit more Then I found prob mm -hmm. I probably found rally roots first on YouTube and mm -hmm. it just built from there. Yeah. That's what led me into the garage sales. Cause they were really heavy into that at the time. And then it just built from there. I found thrift stores, flea markets, but it, it initiated from, just finding somebody that already knew about it and then just happened to tag along. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, it kind of sounds crazy if you're not a reseller, you're like, I'm going to Ross to flip shoes and you're like, Hmm, you know, but, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of these retail stores that especially now that they're so overloaded and overstocked with items that it's like, you know, mm -hmm. give it a try because um, you know, people don't realize that eBay is worldwide and there's a right. worldwide audience out there that, you know, I've been shipping things, uh, to Europe, to Brazil, you know, to, uh, things that, that maybe not have as much value in America, but someone will pay 150 bucks for that Buffalo leather diesel jacket, right. you know? And it's like, huh, interesting. But, uh, yeah. So, um, and so as far as like niching down, do you sell just on eBay or I don't know, like, are you doing still Poshmark um, or are you just trying to go all in on eBay? Ideally, I would go all in on eBay or Poshmark. I do sell on eBay and Poshmark. Mm -hmm. Ideally, I would sell on one or the other. Uh, just haven't gotten mm -hmm. to that point yet. Both of them are like eBay is definitely the main machine but it's probably like 55%, 45%. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I just haven't got to the point where I just want to cut one completely off. Mm. Uh, because like I said, like my, my bills rely on it and it's, yeah. it's scary. Yeah. It's a scary transition. Sure. Yes. I am focusing mainly on eBay, trying to scale eBay up to the point that mm -hmm. I can cut off Poshmark. Um, I recently cut off Mercari. I was selling on eBay, Poshmark, mm -hmm. Mercari. Getting yeah. rid of Mercari was such like a, a weight off the shoulders. I'm sure getting rid of one of the other platforms would feel the same way, but I'm just not quite there yet. Yeah. Um, do you use like a listing service or do you just copy it, it over? Yeah. Know? So do I, you, I, sorry, go ahead. No, I just, did you uh, list the same shoes on eBay and Poshmark or do you just do like yeah. half and half? Yeah. And that brings up a good point. I, first off, I do use a listing uh cross listing service. I mm -hmm. use list perfectly just cause it's like, mm -hmm. it's the Chrome extension. So I can literally just copy mm -hmm. it and it just pulls up all the tabs at one time. Yeah. So that takes nice. no time. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I just lost my train of thought. You brought something up and I forgot what it was. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. I mean, I was just wondering like, um, you know, some people like will just list maybe specific shoes that sell better on Poshmark that's, than they do on eBay. Or that's what it is. The, the, um, the other thing that had me hesitant about dropping one of them is because there's like, as I'm sure you know, there's brands that do well on eBay that never sell on Poshmark. And there's brands mm -hmm. that sell on Poshmark that never sell on eBay. And part yeah. of me wants to just like, you know, dig into it and figure out what those brands are and like only yeah. list on those platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, like that's an option, but like I guess I'm just not doing that yet. Mm -hmm. And you are uh, just shoes. You don't, you know, you'll maybe flip, you know, if you find something, but you're just mainly just shoes. That's what you're looking to do yeah. for the long term, too. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've learned my lesson. Like I, I casually go thrifting every now and then and like I'll find things that I know I can make money on. And every single time that happens, like I have a uh, I have a Guitar Hero set that's brand new in the box mm -hmm. that I think is worth like two hundred dollars on eBay. And mm -hmm. it's been in my closet for three months because I don't I don't have anywhere to photograph it. I have nowhere to store it. I just don't have the motivation to list yeah. it. Yeah. And I have random things around my apartment that I'm just keeping now because I bought them yeah. knowing that I made money on them. And I just don't list them. Now you own it. Exactly. <laughs> I've yeah. Learned my lesson. Um, yeah. It was the same thing with this bulk buyout with the storage units. It's like, I mainly just want clothes. I just mm. have a place to take pictures of clothes. That's yeah. why the shoes have been a struggle for me. Um, there was about probably I've accounted for a little over 200 pairs of shoes, uh, that were kind of like 1999 to like 2005. Yeah. Um, but I don't really have the best place to photograph them. So I left them for last. 
and now yeah. I'm like, oh my god. Now you're gosh, just looking yeah. at them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're cool. Um, they definitely bring you back to the early 2000s. Um, but checking for dry rot and stuff like that is, is just, it of takes course. more time. So um, when I have this streamlined process for clothes, it's like, ah. Uh, so it's good to have a maybe some other reseller friends that could buy the rest of the stuff. Um, right. So where do you see... Um, 10 years from now, I know this is long-term stuff, but do you see yourself now maybe doing more of social media to help people get into reselling or maybe, you know, doing events to like, you had said it on the um, daily refinement channel. Like that's something you could see yourself doing, maybe doing small meetups with people, maybe helping them along with their business. Like, do you see that in the future, long-term? Like, do you see that happening anytime? Yeah. So first off, I don't know. Right. So mm. like if you asked me 10 years ago, even five years ago, if yeah. I seen myself selling used shoes on the internet, I, I would have called you crazy. Yeah. So I, I don't I know. know. Yeah. And like yeah. the number one thing that's most important to me is just like setting myself up for success, like mm -hmm. max out the IRA, save, put money aside. Like I want to get it. Hopefully yeah. I own a home by then. Like that stuff's important. The cushion yeah. underneath needs Owning to be important. Land, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, and then like mm -hmm. back to the social media thing, like, like, yeah, like, that's, that's a lot of fun for me. And yeah. do I know if it looks like teaching people how to resell? I don't know. Does it look like yeah. working with a company and doing their social media for them? I don't know. I just, mm -hmm. I really yeah. love the analytics of it. I love the creation mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Um, right now I'm just playing with it. Like I'm just mm -hmm. figuring out what's works for me. I'm trying this private label um things mm -hmm. so figuring out yep. like how shopify works how do i mm -hmm. market this item like once i sell to my follower base that that loves me like how do i sell to other people that don't know who i am like just learning yep. all that and just mm -hmm. building up my skill set mm -hmm. like that's what i'm focusing on right now and in 10 yeah. years i'm confident that i'll enjoy where yeah I'm at. absolutely yeah yeah if you are in need of shoe trees go to his instagram they can order it through your instagram yep uh, uh, i'm also I have a website dealing with Dalton.com. Okay. Cool. Um, but if you go down. through Instagram mm -hmm. and use code Insta, it'll give you 10% off the bundle. So nice. if anybody's interested. Cool. Cool. Um, and then just final question, you know, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're busy. Um, what would you say to someone that maybe is thinking about reselling or maybe getting, just getting started with reselling? What would you say for them to be as their like top priority to be focusing on for heading into quarter four and how to handle and manage um, the more impressions and the more uh, traffic coming? Like, what would you say, like, what would be your number one tip? Um, depending on where they're at, turn their, turn the blinders on, like stop, mm -hmm. stop looking at every single person on social media mm -hmm. and like comparing to like how many sales they're getting during Q4 and don't think about like, what am I supposed to be doing? Like, what's the, what's mm -hmm. the proper step? Like I said, prepare yourself for the impressions. Like you have the supplies on hand, but like, mm -hmm. if you're new to it, don't feel like there's one right way. Like test out yeah. everything, source mm -hmm. everywhere, sell everything and just figure out what you like. Just don't, yeah. don't get so wrapped up in the fact that it's Q4 and just focus more on like figuring your business out for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this time last year, it was kind of like one boot and one sandal on like, what do I do? What do I do? And mm -hmm. I just finally decided to be like, okay, I'm doing clothes. That's what I'm sticking with. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going to go with in the results. Kind of, they just speak for themselves. You're like, oh, yep. I'm selling more and I'm not focusing on VCRs and uh, headphones and uh, <laughs> you know, all these other things that um, mm -hmm. it was really a uh, less stressful and I don't yeah. need more and, stress. <laughs> and I will add like one more, like, tactical piece of advice that a lot of people aren't doing if you're especially people that are new and they're scared of fees and everything um especially during q4 there's a lot of competition like everybody's ramped up everything for q4 focus in on the the tools that ebay's offering you coupons markdown sales the um the retargeting with the um uh the newsletter, newsletter all these yeah. different things that you can do mm -hmm. to add impressions to your listings mm -hmm. like just yeah. test that stuff out a lot of people don't even care about it just yeah look into it yeah yeah, do what others aren't taking advantage of. Yeah, yeah. that's so true. Um, well, I appreciate, you know, having you on. Um, if you want to follow Dalton, I'll link his Instagram down below. Um, go ahead and check him out. He offers a ton of great advice on what to look for if you're a shoe reseller. Um, otherwise, I hope you all have a blessed and beautiful day. And thank you for watching.
take care. Thanks, Bill. You're welcome.